Welcome to the first episode of Summing Up, a show from Alaska Software about the latest X Space Plus Plus update. Today we are talking about some changes of build 757. <coughs> and the Summing Up show, I will not talk about all changes, I will talk only about the selection of changes we applied to the update, we delivered the update, um, changes which I think are of some additional value and means of we can tell you something behind the ratio, for example. So let's start with this one. <coughs> it's about the consolidation of the log files. In the past, the workbench has split around log files on different locations. We have consolidated that and will use that location in the future for other log uh, files. <coughs> Um, the location is now under your documents xbase++ folder where you already uh, know that there is the projects folder where the default projects are located. <coughs> we added the logs directory on the same level, like here. As you see, this is the log file of the activation tool, the log file of the update tool, and the log file of the workbench, of the xbase++ workbench. Specifically, the workbench file is important. If the workbench crashes, you can save it and send it over to tech support. It may help them in identification of the root cause of the crash. <coughs> uh, some note about the dot in front. All directories with a leading dot are, let's say, XBase++ system directories. They are used to store assets uh, or settings or templates or other configurations. Next one, the local universal SQL engine uses the SQLite. In fact, what we have done is we embedded SQLite into the XBase++ runtime. Uh, those who, kn who know SQLite, SQLite is a SQL engine without a type system. Basically, it uses a concept which is called affinity typing, which means the data type of a column depends on the value of that column, which also means each column, each row in a column can have different data types or values. Um, well, while this allows a lot of flexibility, flexibility it's a contradiction to how we as database developers see tables. It means of each column has a fixed type, which gives us a set couple of guarantees. So we changed that with the 757 update, the SQLite engine, or therefore the universe SQL layer in XBase++ is now str strictly typed uh, even with the universal SQL tables and, and columns. Uh, the type system used is the DDL type system, which means that it's more richer, it's richer than the val type type system, to give you an idea. The DDL type system of XBase++, DDL data definition language, means we are talking about the type system you are using when <coughs> you're creating tables. Um, let's see, let's have a look into types ch, which is from your XBase++ plus plus installations include directory. You see, you're using this type of one character identifications to describe types when you're creating table for the FOX or the ADS or the um, DBF, DBE tables. Some of you may already know them, others have never touched into that area of XBase++. The core message here is with the Universal SQL, we are now support the full set of DDL types, which is very rich. In that context, um, the DDL types are so-called subtypes, which means XBase++ knows a set of core types, which is XBP undef, character, numeric, logical data, array, object, block. And then there are subtypes, for example, the XBP memo. It's a subtype of the character because it's XBP character plus large capability, so like variable. Or there's the var size type, which is finally combined with char and gives up the var char, which means XBP char, XBP character is padded 
and the var chart is not padded in your table. Set that with 757. You can now have types with your universal SQL tables, which means you will not get uh, errors like in the past where a column was declared as a character, but has included only digits in the character value, which then was treated as a numeric value by the universal SQL layer because that's how SQLite behaved in the past. Now it's working like you would await from a XSpace++ perspective. Yup, another one. <clears throat> We added a README to assemble. Not dramatically impressive, but this is the README. A simple HTML code. The sample is about the styled combo box for those which have never had a look into these new samples of 2.0. The styled combo box sample is a sample about uh, how to make use out of the web UI. The web UI is the capability in XSpace++ to use HTML and CSS when doing owner drawing of standard Windows user interface controls. What we have here is a regular drop-down combo box, and we're using HTML, CSS to do the owner drawing instead of using GDI or GDI+. Much more simpler, much more easier to use. No, not many calculations about uh, where to position which image and text and all that stuff. It's all done automatically by the rendering engine of by the HTML CSS rendering engine. So very easy to use. And this example shows you how to use that technology in the first step to understand the technology. And in the second step, how to use it to the maximum and how to encapsulate your user interface components in a perfect manner from our perspective again. But uh, I think the interesting stuff here is that when you start up the project, let's say I'm closing here, and now I'm opening again the sample, I'm loading the project file, and it automatically loads that readme. And the question is, how is that done? Answer, when you look down here, you see after we loaded the project, the project XWB file is executed. What the hell is that? Let's see, Explorer, opening up, project XWB, here it is. Let's see what it includes. Oops, looks like PHG code, and that's exactly what it is. XWB files can be located as auto XWB in the installation of the workbench or in your project directory and they get automatically loaded when you load the project and there is a project xwb then it's get loaded the content is pure xspace plus plus code and it's simple executed in our case we're checking if there is a readme file if there is a readme file we do the memory read and uh, use a function of the workbench uh, to display the html very simple but the idea is that you can add whatever you want on, um, to the startup of your project when you load it into the workbench. For example, since 2.0, you can not only connect to a remote database source, but you also can give that connection a name. So why not use your project XWB file to connect to the ADS or to the PostgreSQL server? Give that connection a name and use that connection name inside the command window of the workbench, like here, to perform a select against the remote data source to which you are already connected when loading the project. Very handy, very useful. So what's next? Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, we extended the DLL call with another call mode. Which call mode is called Restore FPU, as the name implies. We are uh, with that call mode. The DLL call restores the floating point unit settings in means of control word um, to the ones the XSpace++ runtime requires. This sounds a little bit weird because typically nobody changes the floating point unit control words in a running process because this changes how the floating point unit behaves, how it does rounding, how it handles exceptions, underflows, overflows, uh, even the precision of all mathematical floating point operations are 
uh, controlled by the control word. Uh, unfortunately, in the last couple of years, more and more printer drivers popped up which are not correct implemented or which have errors inside and which may leave the floating point control word in a different state than it was initially when the printer driver started printing. Well, well, normally we don't care about this, but the truth is, this means the behavior of the floating point unit may have changed after you did some printing, which in turn leads to changes in the behavior of your runtime, in means of rounding behavior or precision behavior if it comes to floating point operations. So what we did first is with the other work item, W16CT1, we protect the printer drivers from affecting the runtime and because we <laughs> thought it's, um, that there are other areas where the runtime again can be affected, we added that call mode. It's just an additional layer of protection of your XSpace Plus application against the outside bad world. Um, yeah. Well then, as always, besides features, we did many PDR fixes. I think those three are the most notable ones. Uh, number one is about an issue with the XSpace++ debugger. Truth is, with Windows 10 anniversary update, uh, a specific Windows debug API uh, started to perform hundreds of thousands times slower than with previous versions of Windows. We have no idea why that is the case. Maybe this is a shift to other developers from Microsoft. Maybe this is just the oversight from a developer at Microsoft. Maybe this by attention because this API is also being able to use to break into other processes, which means it's a great API for doing uh, virus Trojaner development. Maybe that's the reason why they changed it. Anyway, we fixed the issue with XSpace++ by re-implementing that API without the drawbacks from Microsoft and now we are back to normal. We enhance the capability to XBIP browse and XBIP quick browse to react on pen gestures uh, when it comes to touch support, which is no great with this. Even you don't need to write additional code, it's automatically included, that type of support. And finally, we also uh, fixed some issues with the ADS database engine regarding universal SQL support and SQL statement and query support. Oops. So, <clears throat> we're done with the first summing up show. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching this episode and see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.